Hallelujah. It's another day in paradise. And we're starting now once again with Healing Academy. And today is the 15th day of September, 2022. And so we're moving forward and marching on and watching the world unfold exactly as our Lord said it would. Every prophetic declaration coming to pass right before our eyes. And so it's exciting times we're living in. And it's wonderful to be here with you all sharing all of this growing together and living together. Amen. Well, we're going to get started. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today and give you praise, honor, and glory. We lift up the name, the precious, powerful, and mighty name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here with us now to lead God and direct us in all truth and all righteousness and direct us and bring revelation, illumination. Let us see, let us realize Reveal it to us today how we have actually already been healed in Jesus Christ by the name, by the stripes on his back. He took that whipping on his back for our healing. He died on the cross and poured out his blood for our salvation. So we thank you today. We give you all the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And everyone agreeing said, Amen. Well, praise God. We're going to get started. And um, we're on our way to consider your verdict. If you recall, I started this particular series on healing, and I said, I, I entitled it, Consider Your Verdict. And so what that means is you're going to get information. I'm, I'm imparting information to you from the Word of God. And when it's all said and done, by the end of all the information that you have received, you are going to have an opportunity now to say, okay, I've acquired the knowledge. Now I need to consider my verdict. Is healing yes or no? Is healing now or later? Is healing now or not? Is healing only for the apostles or for me too? Can I? And all the questions should be answered and you will then consider your verdict and you will make a decision from there. So you get acquisition, and then if you consider your verdict, yay and amen, you do application and apply what you've learned to your life. Amen. So good morning to you folks, Brother Jack Wilson and Pastor Adam Castrilla and Suzanne Palm. I'm sure she's with David. Yes, Suzanne and David. And guess what? It's Suzanne's birthday today. Susan, happy birthday. God bless you. We sung to you last night. And maybe when everyone's on you later on, we might sing to you again. But we're praying for God's blessings to flow through your life. And that this will be an exponentially increase in revelation knowledge and the presence of God in this new year. So I pray for that and total healing and good health for you and all your loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to get going. Now. I've got 10 things I'm revealing to you, and I've revealed a few of them already. And let me just go through them. Number one was God healed in the Old Testament. We looked at that. Number two, the Israelites heard of Jehovah Rapha for the first time in the book of Exodus, Exodus when they had left uh, Egypt. So God revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. Remember, this is to find out if healing is still for today and if it ever was. Amen. And then number three, we looked at Jesus is the healer or is a healer. And we saw that Isaiah prophesied by his stripes he would be healed, etc., etc. And more, th more than that. And then in 1 Peter 2.24, it was confirmed. And then we saw um, that Jesus came in 1 John 3 to destroy the works of the devil, and he went about healing everyone. So that was number three. Number four, the four Gospels record 41 distinct instances of physical and mental healings. Distinct instances of mental and, and physical healings, not to mention because Remember, they brought the multitudes out to Jesus and he healed them all. That was more than 40 people in a multitude. We're talking about 40 specific instances of God healing someone. Amen. 
or the 10 lepers, but that's one instance. But this is not counting all the multitudes and all the sick that were brought to him, and he healed each and every one, and he healed them all. Amen. So <clears throat> the four Gospels record 41 distinct instances of physical and mental healings. And then number five, we looked at this one as well. Jesus' followers ministered healing. And we saw the 12 disciples and the 70 disciples, the followers of Jesus, all went about healing all that came to them and that were oppressed of the devil. So we saw that the followers of Christ in his day ministered healing. Amen. And today we're going to start looking at the Jerusalem church. Everyone say the Jerusalem church. Amen. So we're looking at that right now. And go with me to Acts in the book of Acts chapter 3, 3 and verse 2. Now this is the church. Uh, sorry, I, I made a mistake. Acts 4 and verse 29. Acts 4, 29. Write it down, turn to it, make notes of it. Now, please like and share. Tag your friends right now. Just tag them on your phone and just say, hey, watch us now. Just tag them, like and share so more people will come on and get the word of God. So now we're looking at the Jerusalem church. Amen. Acts 4, 29. This is after the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and created and formed the church era, the church age, which we're now living in. Acts 4, 29. Now, Lord, look on their threats. This was the threats of the Sanhedrin and all of these religious leaders in Israel, the Jewish Sanhedrin and um, all of the people there, the scribes and the Pharisees, coming against this Christian community now, we had received Christ as the Lord and Savior in Acts 1 and 2, and now they were coming against them. And now these disciples are praying, Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Verse 30, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. You see that? Now, let me show you one or two things here. First of all, um, as children of God, as disciples of God, whether you're in the fivefold ministry or not, you've got to see uh, they talking to God and say, look on their threats and grant your servants. You've got to consider yourself as a servant. Now, we are children of God, sons and daughters, but also get this in your spirit, we are servants. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but I came to serve. He came as a servant. These disciples who were with Christ said, look upon your servants and grant us a boldness. Now you can get that boldness only one way, and that's through the power of the Holy Spirit. He will bring a boldness upon you that will defy everything that you ever were. And you see that in, in, in the book of Acts, uh, Acts 2, when Peter and then received the Holy Spirit, the church era begun, the same man who denied Jesus three times, he denied him three times, and all of the disciples deserted Jesus. They ran when he was arrested. So you could see that they didn't have that boldness that after the Holy Spirit came, he said, you'll be filled with power from on high. Peter stood up and he said to those people, the Christ that you crucified is what's happening now. And this was spoken by the prophet Joel. He's pouring out his spirit on all flesh. And 3,000 of them got saved that same day. That was a boldness that came on Peter because of the Holy Ghost. Now they're saying, grant your servants that with a boldness, we will speak your word. And, you know, sometimes we go into a place, we're shopping, Walmart, Publix, wherever we go, and you see somebody there and you know they need a word from God or they're sick and you know you'd love to pray for them, but you're lacking a thing called boldness. That's when you should pray and say, Holy Spirit, grant me your servant, your child, Father, 
that with the boldness of God proclaim what you've done for these children. And then what will happen is that boldness will come upon you if you're in faith and you go and speak to that person, tell them about Jesus, lay hands on them for healing, whatever it is. Can you say amen? All right, so now. He says, I'll speak your word. Don't speak the words you want to say. Speak the word God wants you to say. And remember this, Jesus said, when they bring you up before judges and they want to condemn you, etc., etc., he says, don't worry and think of what you should say. Rely on the Holy Spirit. He'll give you the words to say. So when you pray for the boldness, now you want to speak God's word and you don't want to speak your word. You want to speak his word and you'll go to that person and say, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus loves you. How do I know that? Because he did this for me. And, and God will just start and it's like a snowball. Boom. And all of a sudden you'll find yourself leading that person to Christ or laying your hands on them to be healed. It's a powerful thing. The boldness of the spirit of God. Amen. So he says, now watch it, by stretching out a hand to heal, that signs and wonders will be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. He even calls him a servant there. Amen. Some of them through your holy child, Jesus. But when you look at this whole thing, Jesus came as a servant and he is the son of God. But they prayed for healing. So the church themselves were praying that they would go around doing what they did when Jesus wasn't there, when Jesus was there. Because he sent them out. We saw that, the 12, the 70, and many others. Paul, and you saw all of that. And so what happened now was Jesus had resurrected and ascended. So now he's not there with them anymore. And they're saying, give us that same boldness we had that he gave us when he was here, that we can go and do what we did when he was here. That's it. So the church that God created had the, 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 the desire and also the mandate because Jesus said, when I'm gone, he said, go make believers and followers. They that believe shall be saved. Remember, they that don't, they're in trouble. Then he says, in my name, you'll pray in other tongues. You'll cast out devils. If you get bitten by poisonous snakes or drink something deadly on accident, it shall not harm you. And then you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. James 5, 14. If any of you are sick, any of them or any of you are sick among you, call for the elders of the church and I'll pray for you and boom, talking healing. So healing is meant to be continued today. It wasn't just for the time when Jesus was there. It wasn't just for the time when the disciples were there. It wasn't just for the time when the apostles were there. It's for today. Amen. For you and me. Okay, Acts 5, watch out now, Acts 5, they just prayed in verse, in chapter 4, 29, give us a boldness to go there and lay hands on the sick, Acts 5, verse 12, and through the hands of the apostles. Wow, look at this, right there, not even a chapter later, God is telling them, listen, go lay hands on these people, you've got the boldness now. And pray for them. Watch here. And through the hands of the apostles, which I just prayed for, many signs. Everyone say many. Say it again. Many. Amen. Type down many. Because there were many. We're going to look at multitudes. That's more than many. Okay. Now watch here. Many signs and wonders were done among the people. This is not the disciples and the apostles now. This is the people, all of the people, including the apostles. It wasn't just for them and for the disciples and apostles and followers of Christ. It was for everybody. This is, this is powerful, powerful stuff. Many, many, many. Amen. And so now watch it. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. The place they'd been told don't go to. They said, no, we're going there. We've got to do what God tells us to do. And they went to Solomon's porch, which was at the temple. And they continued laying hands and praying for the sick. And they were getting healed many signs and wonders. 
Praise God. A sign is something you see on the 95. It says speed limit or sharp curve ahead or on the road you see signs. It's there to tell you something. Well, these people saw signs to tell them that Jesus does this and wonders, how can this be? My fingers have grown out. That's a wonder. Are you with me? So many signs and wonders they saw at the hands of those that just prayed for a boldness to stretch out hands and lay them on the sick. And they recovered many signs and wonders. You see, so it wasn't just for Jesus. And it wasn't just for when Jesus was on the earth. Got it? Remember, at the end of this, you are going to consider your verdict and make a decision. All right. Moving on. Look at this. Verse 15. Please either write these down or turn in your Bible to them because it's important for you to see the scriptures for yourself. Amen. Praise God. Verse 15. So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. We're talking sick people. Beds and couches. They couldn't even stand up. A lot of them. Right? Cripples and you name it. Paraplegic. All kinds of maladies. Watch here. They brought the sick out into the streets. There wasn't a house large enough to hold them. The temple wouldn't have been enough. All the sick. I mean, think about it. In Jerusalem, those days, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of people. They estimate 80,000. So imagine all the sick. I don't know how many people we've got in Florida right now in a, in Port St. Lucie, but I believe there's 100,000, maybe 150, 200,000. I'm not sure. But if you brought all the sick to my front door today, there'd be no room. You wouldn't be able to fill up. This neighborhood wouldn't be able to contain it. Correct? Now watch here. They brought all the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Wow. Why would they even think that? Because signs and wonders. When they see something that they can't understand, they wonder at it. They say, this is a wonder. Maybe even his shadow. And I guarantee you his shadow, which has the Holy Spirit through the power of God, would heal people. Or else it wouldn't have been mentioned. But think about this. If they were thinking that way, how many people were there? He's not going to be able to get to lay hands on me. Maybe he's shallow at least and we'll get healed. Oh, come on, guys. You've got to get this. They didn't say that with Jesus. When Jesus was there, because we had another disciples, and these people were getting healed left, right, and center. Wow. So watch here. So that Peter passing by, his shadow might fall on some of them. Verse 16. Now watch here once again. Also, excuse me, I'm sorry. Just give us one second. Someone's arrived. Thank you. Someone has arrived to do something at my house and my dog likes barking at people. Good watch, dog. All right, now watch here. Verse 16 now. We're in Acts 15. Uh, 5 verse 15 we just read now we're reading 16 now watch it also a multitude gathered not only from jerusalem but surrounding cities to jerusalem wow so not only port saint lucy but surrounding cities to port saint lucy fort pierce stewart jupiter west palm all the surrounding cities the treasure coast imagine come on guys come on Get this. We're still living in those days. Now watch here. So they brought the sick into the streets, laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Verse 16. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem. Wow. Bringing sick people and those who were tormented. Now he's talking about who were tormented with unclean spirits. Oh my goodness. Now hold on. Jesus wasn't even on the earth there in his physical body. He was in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now watch here. 
all of those, all these, all bringing all sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all. Everyone say all. They were all healed. Now we're not talking about many or a few or one or two. We're talking about the multitudes. Listen again. Verse 16. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Now Jesus wasn't there. Amen. But they still got healed in greater numbers. Remember, Jesus said, the works I do when I'm gone, the works I do, you will do and greater works than this. Well, Jesus healed multitudes as well. He healed every one of them. I believe there were more multitudes here because there were more people to to um, after Jesus death that people had heard about him. More people came out and there were 12 apostles at this stage 11 and they were laying hands on the sick people and they were being healed. So there must have been a fortune of people that came out. Now watch here. Jesus had left. Remember? He had just left. He ascended into heaven. But before he ascended into heaven, he has already said to them, he said, in my name you'll pray in other tongues. What happened the day that the Holy Spirit came? They prayed in other tongues. What happened here in this, this scripture we just read? Those who were tormented by unclean spirits, didn't he say you will cast out demons in my name? Yes. But he also said poisonous snakes and vipers and poison won't harm you. So I guess that's true as well. Amen. And then also think about this. This is quite amazing. They laid hands and their shadow and they were touching and talking to people. And God said, and the sick shall recover. They were seeing exactly what Jesus spoke. Is that correct? So they were seeing exactly what Jesus spoke. And praise God, hallelujah, they were all healed. While you think on that, I'm having a sip of coffee. <clears throat> Thank you. Praise God. I've got Pastor John Gruber sitting here. It's so sweet. He came to help me when these people arrived because... I asked him if he wouldn't help me out because they've actually come to replace my daughter's windshield. Uh, it just cracked out of the blue. And guess what? Didn't cost me a cent. Insurance is a good thing sometimes, right? Praise God. All right. Now, so the Jerusalem church, we just showed you there some scriptures on how the church now exploded forth with healings. Now, look at this. Acts 6. Go with me to Acts 6. And we're looking at verse 8. Now we're looking at another man. He wasn't one of the 12. Stephen. Look what happened here. And Stephen, full of faith and power. Oof. Remember Jesus came out of the wilderness, full of power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he said to these guys, wait until you're full of power from on high. There were 120 in that upper room, and I guarantee you Peter was one of them because they chose these other seven. Remember to wait on tables? Yeah. Hello. And so he was there. The power of the Holy Ghost came on them. Oh, my goodness. And Stephen, full of faith and power. <laughs> I just get excited. He did great wonders and signs among the people. Guaranteed healing. Left right and center getting people saved getting people spirit full praying in other tongues and, and getting people healed i can just see it right now the amounts of people rushing to someone that's walking i mean think about benny hinn pastor benny hinn what a man of god wonderful man of god catherine coleman wonderful woman of god you know catherine coleman the stadiums wherever she preached were they couldn't get more people in. They were packed out. They'd go to a church, 10,000 people. They had waiting people outside. When one person's got the power of God on them and people realize there is a spirit on that woman or that man that is unsurpassable with all the other people I know, I'm going there. You'll get multitudes, multitudes, I say, coming to you, right? Benny Hinn, look at his meetings. 
thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people coming out. Correct? For one person. But it's not the person. It's the Holy Spirit in the person. And guess what? You and I and Pastor John had that same Holy Spirit that's in that was in Catherine Coleman, Benny Hinn, Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, Jesus Christ, Paul, Peter, John, James, Bartholomew, Philip, come on, Thomas, the same spirit that was in them, including Jesus, is in you and me. So do I have to wait for somebody that's demonstrating it to get healed? Or can I get to a place where I demonstrate it? I get healed and I see people around me healed. Well, if I want to have what they've got, I might have to do what they do. Because you know that they spend time, quality time, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's a, it's a communion. And it's fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit that raises that awareness of the power of God. And your faith becomes explosive. And when you get to that point that you believe because you're spending time with the Spirit, you will see miracle signs and wonders at your hands too. I'm just saying. Amen. So, Stephen, what about Philip? Go with me to chapter 8 in Acts, verse 5. Because, you see, people will always say, well, that was for Jesus' day. Well, that was for the 12 uh, apostles chosen by the Lamb of God. We understand that. But you saw after Jesus had left, well, the apostles died and Jesus is gone. The apostles didn't die. Oh, neither did Jesus. He died in the natural, but in the spiritual, he never, ever died. And neither did you and I, if we saved. And the apostles that saw Jesus resurrected and knew he was the Son of God didn't die either. They just went ahead to the kingdom of God. Amen. They're not dead. I love what Billy Graham said. He said, when I have my funeral, when I die, when I pass on, he said, tell people I'm more alive now than I've ever been before. So they didn't die. And people say, well, the apostles died out and they're gone. Well, gee, God himself said, I am the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't say I was the father. Why? Because we know Abraham's bosom. We know Abraham spoke to the people. We know that they're still alive. So the apostles didn't really die as people here don't understand. Well, they died. Well, then I guess Jesus died too. But he was resurrected. So the Jew and I don't have to die. So Jesus isn't dead, neither are the dis disciples of God, neither are the apostles, neither is Catherine Kuhlman dead, neither is Billy Graham dead. They've gone from this natural realm to the actual realm. Oof. They, I'll say that again. They've gone from the natural realm to the actual realm where God lives, where we're destined. Oh, come on, guys. So they're not dead. Oh, hi, Naya from Trinidad and all these other precious, wonderful people. Oh, my goodness, Dr. Rick Kendall. <laughs> Greetings from another coffee lover. Such a blessing. I've been meaning to phone you. And if I don't phone you today, then I, I don't know. I will call you. Praise God. Now, listen here. Philip, Acts 8, 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles he did. <laughs> he wasn't one of the original 12. Yeah. So what do you say to that? Well, okay, mate. No, no, no. Get out of yourself and get into the spiritual realm and let the Spirit of God reveal truth to you. Amen. Watch here. Spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles he did. 
Well, he was really not the one doing the miracles. He was a conduit, the Holy Spirit doing the miracles. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Then Jesus could go and heal people. How God anointed Philip with the Holy Ghost and with power, who then went to doubt about healing and doing good. How Gerard Curry was anointed with power and the Holy Spirit and then could go around doing. Say the same of yourself. Listen, Romans 8, 11. But if he that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, then he that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken, bring to life your mortal body by his spirit which dwelleth in you. He doesn't come and go. He lives. Amen. Oh, my God. This is exciting. I get excited. I don't know about you. If you're not hoopering and hollering around there, around your coffee mug, I don't know. Okay, now watch that. Verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, <laughs> and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Woo, I just, I don't know about you, but I'm getting faith building up in me right now to go out there and lay hands on sick people. I think, you know, we're starting some new meetings. Um, on the 4th of October, Tuesday morning, I'm starting with leadership and men. And, and then what I want to do is I want to start going into the nursing homes again. And I want to start going into the hospital. You know why I want to start going into the hospital? Where they'll allow us. We'll get permission. But my mother-in-law, when she, her miracle's coming next Sunday. You've got to hear this. Remember, we're going to have the Testimony Sunday at Synergy, Christ Family Church in Synergy, not a traditional worship center. We'll have both services. We'll have 10 o'clock. At traditional worship center then 11 o'clock at uh cross fellowship cross family church in synergy and that one in synergy is going to be the one where we're going to give the information of what actually happened how it happened how it worked and testimony we're going to have uh, questions and answers it's going to be amazing and other people are doing the same amen so that's going to come but now look at this these paralyzed and the lame were healed is that still happening today? Yes, it is. Now, the reason why I was telling about my mother-in-law, when she was taken to Tradition Hospital, Cleveland Clinic and Tradition, my wife said, or someone told me, that I think my wife said, there were beds down the hallways of sick people waiting to be seen. Down in the hallways, not even in rooms. What a place to gather. So I'm thinking, are you with me? How many of you are ready for this? To go into the nursing homes. You're not scared. We, they tell us to wear a mask, we'll wear a mask. Amen? But we, will go, we are going to go in and to nursing homes. We're going to start teaching in nursing homes again. I'm going to look for teams again. We're starting it all up again. And then we're going to go into the hospitals, hospital visitations. We've got the prison ministry going again. We're going to go and lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay? But you're going to consider your verdict. Remember at the end of this teaching. So I'm going to read that one more time. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. <laughs> preached Christ and then crucified what it means for them. Then the multitudes, with one, the multitudes, once again, multitudes. That's more than one person. That's more than five people. That's more than ten people. That's more than a thousand people multitudes they worked it out as anything from 15 to 20,000 when people did a study on that going back in time and looking at that anything from 15 to 20,000 Jesus fed the multitudes but they say 5,000 besides the children and wives there was a multitude he fed but we don't always see it as a multitude now listen to this and the multitudes many people thousands of them, with one accord, listened, heard, heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. You see, when they start hearing and seeing miracles, they're going to listen more intently. Oh my God, this is wonderful. Verse 7, for unclean spirits. Didn't we just say that God said, go into all the world in my name, pray in other tongues and cast out demons? Yeah. Well, there they're doing it again. We saw the disciples just did it. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice. Oh, I love that. 
I love that. I've heard people burning books and records and things, and they said they heard the screaming and widgy boards and games, and they, they heard the rah, rah, screaming. Yeah. You, you see, I've cast out a demon out of someone, and when that person came up, they started screaming. That's the demon leaving. They're scared of you. Oh, they're not scared of you. They're scared of who's in you and the authority you carry and the power. So watch it. They came up with a loud voice and many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame <laughs> were healed. Oh, my Lord. They were healed. Everyone say healed. Praise God. This is exciting. We're talking about the New Testament church now, the church that started. Because people want to say, well, Jesus died, healing's dead. Then they want to say, well, the, 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 the 12 apostles died and healing died with them. Then they want to say, well, the disciples, followers of Jesus in that day have, you know, they, they died, so it died with them. How pathetic. I wonder if someone went to Catherine Kuhlman or someone who was healed in a Benny Hinn conference or someone who was healed by Oral Roberts or Smith Wigglesworth raised from the dead. If you went and told that person, you weren't healed, you're still dead, whatever. I wonder what they'd say to you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, watch out. Not only them. This was one that we don't have any information that he was part of the 12, part of the 120 in the upper room. We don't know. But he's called Ananias. Look at this, Acts 9, verse 12. And in a vision he had seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So Ananias is told to go. This is where Paul, the apostle, got saved. He, Jesus came and he fell off his horse, his donkey, and he was blinded for three days. And he fasted for three days, didn't eat a thing or anything else. They led him by the hand to a house in um, Joppa, and Ananias was told by God, he was a follower of Jesus, told by God, I want you to go to this place and go to the street there and go and see a man named Paul and lay hands on him to receive his sight and the Holy Spirit. And Ananias said, whoa, I've heard about this guy. He's one bad dude. He's persecuting Christians and he's going to drag them to, he, very, the reason is he has to drag us to, to, to uh, Jerusalem and get us in jail and whipped. For preaching in your name. And Jesus said, no, but go because I'm going to show him what he must do for me. Oh, my goodness. So in a vision, Ananias sees a man named, uh, sorry, Paul sees a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so he might receive his sight. Verse 17, Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what comes with the Holy Spirit? Anointing and power. So watch here. You may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 18. Immediately they fell from Paul or Saul's eyes. His Greek name was Paul. Um, immediately they fell from his eyes something like scales. And he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. See that? His sight came back like that. He received the Holy Spirit, and he got baptized, and everything in Paul's life changed so radically that he started to receive so much revelation that the devil said, oh, we better buffet this guy, send out a demon to thwart his life, kill him, destroy him, get him bit by snakes, get him overthrown of ships and shipwrecked and starved and thrown in prison and in stocks. we got to stop this man because the revelation that he's getting is going to destroy our kingdom. Yeah, that's who did it, not Jesus. Because he said, my grace is sufficient when Paul cried out. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. And he didn't do it for Paul. And Paul had a sickness in his eyes. You, sometimes we don't know what we're talking about. And I just did a teaching on the thorn in, Paul, thorn in Paul's side. And we proved to you it's got nothing to do with sickness. Amen. Okay, moving on. So now we're looking at Paul. Acts 14. Go to Acts 14, verse 3. Uh, Dr. Rick, cheers. Ah, 
You ready? Okay. Acts 14, verse 3. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now, this is Saul and Apostle and, and Apollos traveling. Verse 8, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. And Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, he saw in this man there's something about him. He's got faith to receive what he's hearing. Verse 10, Paul said with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped up and he walked. Instantaneous healing, right there. Wow. Look at verse, at, 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 at chapter 19, verse 11. Look at this. Now this is a church of God doing this. Jesus is gone. He's no longer in the earth. That's why he said, listen, that's why you're going to understand. When Jesus said, it is more expedient for you in John. It is more expedient for you and it's better for you that I'll go away. Because if I go, I will send you the comforter. But if I don't go, he can't come. But when I go, I will send the comforter to you. Right? And he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And then he explains that. But he says, it's better for you that I go away because the Holy Spirit will come. Well, right, yeah, you can see the result. With Peter healing people by his shadow and all those people getting healed in multitudes, you can see it's better that the Holy Spirit came because now every Christian has the Holy Spirit, not just Jesus. Amen. So we were forced to be reckoned with, and we need to realize that. Amen? Amen. Okay, now watch here. Uh, Acts 19.11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Wow. You know, I said a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago, we're going to start seeing unusual miracle signs and wonders. And I'm telling you what you're going to hear the last Sunday of this month is an unusual miracle, signs and wonders, unusual, that God said we're going to see. And others have got testimonies as well. But you're going to see unusual things. I'm telling you, when you hear this, it's so powerful. Now watch here. Verse 12. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them. Now watch it's not over. And the evil spirits went out of them. Poof. Come on, guys. Come on. Do you see that? Even handkerchief and aprons were like a storage, like a battery storing power for the Holy Spirit. That's why we give out prayer cloths. When the anointing is being strong, you know how many handkerchiefs I've given away? I mean, really, I'll just keep buying. I'm buying them online now. I buy them in the hundreds. I've got drawers full of them because I keep it in my pocket. I don't use it. I keep it in my pockets. And then at the end of the service, people come to me. My husband's not in church or I'm not feeling well or this one's not well, etc. I'm giving handkerchiefs out all the time. All the time. Why? Because when Paul was preaching, the virtues of the Holy Spirit and the anointing would saturate even the handkerchiefs and the clothes he was wearing, so much so that they sent it around to other nations and people were being healed and demons were being cast out from a piece of cloth. That's a pretty unusual miracle, pretty unusual sight. But it's not unusual to you and me if we know it. See, we've seen it. The world hasn't experienced anything like this. And boy, they are so hungry for it right now. Right now, there are more people in the world. I mean, you read the news saying what's going on. Apocalypse movies coming out by the thousands now. End of time movies coming out by the hundreds. It's all happening. And even the world, the unsaved, the not born again, are seeing some things up. Amen. Praise God. So I just love that. I'm going to read that again. Verse 12. So that even... No, let's read the whole thing. 11. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Oh, I wonder if he did it for Paul. I wonder if he could do it for me, Pastor John. What do you guys think? No, he's probably a respecter of people. He respects and honors him more. Oops, 
I have a scripture that says there's no respect of people. What he does for one, he does for everyone. You see, that's what I love about this kingdom we're talking about now. It's truly a level play playing field now. The world we're living is not a level playing field. No more. It never was and it never will be. If it was, Jesus would never have had to come back. Amen. Are you with me? So now, if they did it for Paul, God did it for Paul, unusual miracles by his hands, surely he can work unusual miracles through my hands? Or did he lose some of his power? It's been 2,000 years since Holy Spirit came. I wonder if he kind of lost some of his power. <laughs> he's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. That means he's everywhere, he's all-knowing, and he's all-powerful. And he can't weaken. <laughs> he's still got the same power. When he raised Christ, he's got the same power. When he healed people through Paul's handkerchiefs, he's got the same power to work miracle signs and wonders, unusual ones, through you and me. Yes, believe it. Amen. If you don't believe it, you ain't going to see it. It's just that simple. All right, I'm going to try to get one more in here. Oh, my God. How many more we got? Okay, we're going to get this one in. This the, Remember, this is our sixth point that we're looking at the Jerusalem church after the Holy Spirit came, how they started healing people left, right, and center. Acts 28, verse 2. This is after Paul and them had been shipwrecked in a fight. In, in shipwrecked, remember the ship went down and they ended up on the Isle of Malta. Now watch that. And the natives showed us unusual kindness for they kindled the fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. That means he got a good grip on his hand with his teeth. Now watch it. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Now did God not say you'll be bitten by serpents and poisonous things and it will not harm you? Amen. If you have faith and belief, this is true. Okay, we're showing you everything Jesus said. Demons coming out, people being healed, vipers, poison. We're showing it all to you. Now watch it. But he shook the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that it would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. Because they knew these serpents were deadly. They lived there. Now watch it. Like a rattlesnake, we know. Okay. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, unusual miracle and sign and wonder, right? No, just the word of God. When he speaks, it comes to pass. Now watch here. To them it was unusual. They changed their minds. Instead of being a robber and a burglar and a murderer. And said that he was a God. <laughs> I love it. Oh my Lord. In that region, verse 7, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island. Whose name was Publius. Who received us. And entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius was sick of a fever and dysentery. He was dying. Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. Oh, wow. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came <laughs> and were healed. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is the word of God, the Bible. He's just showing you left, right, and center. Healing works. And we're going to show you it works for you too. But anyway, Romans 15, 18. So you see unusual miracle signs and wonders from being a robber. He's now a God. Wow. And Paul now uses that opportunity, takes opportunity to go and get this man healed. And so many, I can guarantee you that nation right there, that tribe all became born again. All of it, because Paul would not be a he, he was a witness for God. Read Ephesians and Galatians. We just did a study on Galatians, the book of Galatians. Come on. All right. Romans 15, verse 18. This is the last one we're doing. Romans 15 and verse 18. Amen. 
For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient. In mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God whom you possess, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Ilrikim, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Do you see that? Paul the Apostle, he's telling the people, I am not going to preach anything but Jesus Christ and by the power of the Spirit of God, wherever I be, everything is by the power of the Spirit of God and the gospel I'm preaching. So every miracle, sign and wonder, every cloth, every bit of handkerchief, everything that God did through those things came from the power of the Holy Spirit where Paul was preaching the gospel. And he, I guarantee you, preached the gospel also. Alfred, thank you. Preached the gospel also. Who is it? I'm sorry. I'm on the line. Preached the gospel also. Now, what? Paul preached the gospel to all of those on the Isle of Malta. Do you get that? Paul preached the gospel. On the Isle of Malta, wherever he went, the Spirit, he said, through the power of the Holy Spirit, guaranteed Paul led them all to Jesus Christ. Publius, his father, and that whole tribe that took them in and helped them, who thought he was a God, he witnessed Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit came. So when you start to witness Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit comes. And you can then do unusual miracle signs and wonders. Can you say amen? Right? Oh, my goodness. And, and point, I think we've done, I don't even know how many. Let me see. Here. Okay. So we've just checked out the Jerusalem church. And next time, that's six of them we've looked at. Next time. We're going to be looking at healing as a part of church life and ministry. That's church life and ministry today. We're going to see how it's linked to communion. We're going to see how it's lifted among the gifts. We're going to also see, oh my goodness, how the modern church history experiencing and testimony. We're going to show you and prove to you that this was when Jesus was there. In fact, this, we looked at it from the start. I'm just going to go over them again for you. I'm not going to teach them. just going to remind you. Consider your verdict. God healed in the Old Testament, and we saw that in Genesis 20, 17. We saw that. And then point number two. He revealed himself in the Old Testament to the Israelites as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. And we saw those bitten by serpents and the widow's son and Naaman. And my goodness, Miriam healed of leprosy. We saw it all in the old covenant, right? Hezekiah, David, all of these guys. Then we saw point number three. Jesus is a healer prophesied by Isaiah, fulfilled in 1 Peter and 1 John 3, 8. We saw that. Point number four, the four Gospels record 41 distinct instances of physical and mental healings. That, I said, was beside the multitudes, you saw now, besides the multitudes that Jesus healed. All of them that came to him were healed. We're talking just 41 instances where you see him heal blind Bartimaeus, raise the dead, raise Lazarus. All of those, there was 41 separate instances but not mentioning all that were in the great multitudes that came out and he healed them all. So there were thousands upon thousands that Jesus healed in the four Gospels. All right. So we saw that. Then we saw Jesus' followers ministered healing. We're just looking at that now or last week, how the 12 disciples, then the 70 he pointed out, then Peter and the cripple. And then we saw today the church that was formed in the book of Acts, the church, the Jerusalem church, how it, it exploded and broke out. Amen. Now, that's six. Now, next week, we're going to pick up your part in this. Yeah, you better be here. And I want you to like and share. Get it out to some people there. Let me just go and 
Uh, hello to all of you wonderful people. I love you all. God bless you. And wonderful to see all of you there. Um, praise God from Pennsylvania, from Trinidad, from South Africa. Wonderful to see you guys. Uh, God bless you. I'm going to pray for you in a minute. But what I want you to do is to do that. Please like and share. People need to hear the truth that they don't have to be sick and they can be saved. Amen. And so we need you to like and share. In actual fact, you should tag somebody. Um, tell your friends. Tag them. Invite your friends. And we can meet more people around the world and get them saved and healed. We've got people watching us from around the world. And I want to see the word of God go up. I don't care about me. I want God's people to get blessed. Because he created us in his image and likeness. And now they need to come back into the kingdom. Can you say amen? So this is vitally important. Um, just let me, re let me remind you tonight at 5.30, Synergy, uh, hearing God from 5.30. There'll be breakfast, I mean supper from 5.30 to 6. Then there'll be praise and worship. And then from 6.30 to 7.30, bang, hearing from God is going to be awesome. And then the last Sunday of this month, the 25th, um, yeah, the 25th, I believe it is, of this month, at 10 a.m., Traditional Worship Center, 11 a.m., Christ Family Church at Synergy. It's going to be a testimony service, which is a powerful thing. God's going to get all of the glory. It's going to build people's faith up. It's going to build your faith up. It's going to build my faith up. And we're going to grow in this and see what God's doing still today among the people. In actual fact, after that next Sunday, we'll have more testimonies about more things happening. And I've got testimonies of my own that we're going to bring to this. So God bless you. God love you. God keep you. I want to pray for anyone right now who may be facing some issues in their life and you just need that boost. It's like a B12 shot. We're just going to knit our faith together. And we're going to stand in agreement for total healing. And once again, happy birthday to Susan Palm. We love you. You're a precious, precious saint of God. And you, you, you and your husband are super, super amazing. And in fact, all of the people at our church are super amazing. And I'm just blown away that God would bless me like he has. And uh, so praise God. Uh, Suzanne Heck and her husband and all you wonderful people. We love you. Now let's just pray. Receive this if you need healing, because the power of God is almost tangible where I'm sitting right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, through the same Christ that Paul the Apostle preached, that Peter preached, that John preached, that all of the disciples, all of them preached. I preached the same thing today, the same word of God. By the stripes on Jesus' back, you were healed. And by the blood poured out and his death, you were saved. So right now I'm speaking that you are righteous children of God. And 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sicknesses and took our infirmities when he hung on the cross. And we being dead to sin, live unto righteousness now, by whose stripes you were healed. That is the gospel in a nutshell. And so you're saved, you're healed, you're everything else in Jesus' name. So right now, the same Christ that Paul the Apostle preached, I preached right now, and you receive faith as you heard these words spoken. And right now I speak to a sick, any sickness trying to attack your heart, trying to attack your blood, trying to attack your sugar, trying to attack your organs. I come against everyone that's coming against your bones, back problems, spine problems, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, by the power of God invested in me and you, we curse these spiritual infirmities. We command that spirit of infirmity to get out, to loose you and let you go. If it's an old injury from a sports injury or an accident or picking something up heavy and you're suffering with certain ailments in your knees, your back, your shoulders, wherever, I just come against it right now in Jesus' name, and I say be healed of every and all infirmities, sickness, injuries, whatever it is, no weapon is going to prosper. 
And in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who took a beating and a whipping for our healing, be healed today. Those spirits, I bind, I lock them down. Not only do I bind them, I lock them. I throw in the key away in the name of Jesus, but I loose the spirit of healing and health all over your body right now. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, back be healed. Heart be healed. Veins be healed. Diabetes be healed. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Heart be opened and be healed in the name of Jesus. Arthritis go in the name of Jesus. Bad eyes sight be healed in the name of Jesus. Tinnitus or ear problems be healed. Any organ problems, if you've got kidney problems, anything, be healed in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it right now, receive it, and walk in it in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Now I want you to type in there, I'm healed. I just got my final healing and I'm keeping it. Type it now. I've just been healed. I've got it completely and it's not coming back. You've got to type it in. I'm telling you right now, I'm waiting. I know we're a minute over, but I'm waiting. You type it in that you've received it, that I've got someone there. I receive it in Jesus' name. By faith it is mine. I claim it. Amen, my sister. Oh, yes. Write it in there. I just received my complete healing. There. I've got another one. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I just received my complete healing. Say it, Pastor John. He's sitting here with me. I believe me. that I receive. I believe that I receive. He just received his complete healing. you got to say it. Amen. I'm sitting. I'm waiting. Da -da 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 -da. God's good, isn't he? <laughs> I love God. And God loves me. And I love you. And God loves you. And you love me. And we love each other. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Joe, I am healed. Suzanne Palm, I receive it in the name of Jesus. I'm healed. Got it completely. And it's not coming back. There you go. I'm healed. I got it there. The name that's coming in. All of you, put it in. Put it in. I just received my healing. Total and complete. Not to return. It's not coming back. Say it, mean it, receive it, walk in it, speak it, live it in the name of Jesus by the power of our God. Amen. I'm closing down this teaching right now, but the rest of you, if you want to continue just typing it in there on Facebook, on YouTube, I'm healed. I received it. It's never coming back. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you on Sunday. Don't forget, we're teaching about the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. What a powerful mm -hmm. teaching it is. People are already telling me their lives are never the same. Praise God. That's the desire. And so join us Sunday. See you tonight.